Namaste, Ashe, loved one. I'm back again, Miss Penny Penelope is back again, Reverend Penelope. Miss Penny is back again. I wanted to talk a little bit more about healing because you know that's the core, that's the foundation of the work I do, uh, that I've been called to do. And I wanted to get a little bit more into ancestral work and doing shadow work. And I wanted to talk to you about some books that could possibly help you integrate more with doing your shadow work with your ancestral work. Okay. Uh, and I have some, some really good books here that's going to help you with that, especially if you have ancestors, uh, family members, family members who crossed over uh, with uh, those heavy toxic traits and you just cannot work with them you just cannot call on them you just cannot work with them I'm gonna recommend and I understand because I I'm having to do that I'm having to go out and come back in and work my way in that way so this book ancestral medicine is a really good book with helping you go out and come back in and understand those concepts okay so you will have to go through um those holy ancestors those ancestors who have who are elevated and who can help you and you can generally connect with those ancestors when you connect with nature, when you connect with the land, you connect with those ancestors, your unknown ancestors, but they know you, okay? So you can always, and this goes for people who were adopted. If you were adopted, you don't know your family. Uh, you can always go out to the elevated ancestors in your bloodline. You don't have to know them. They know you. Okay, you carry them with you. Now they may begin to reveal themselves to you in dreams or whatever, or in signs or in symbols, you know, or through your senses, they may reveal themselves. But yeah, get this book. This good book is good for that. If you have family members that have toxic, toxic traits. Uh and I may go over some some material in here today. Uh, that may help you. So if I have enough time in this video, I'll come back to this book and see if I can uh, pull out any information. Yeah, I got I, I got things, you know, marked all through these books. I usually do. This book, Healing Ancestral Karma, if you have a dysfunctional family uh, and you're trying to unpeel, maybe there is a uh, a lot of um, sexual abuse that's going on to you, or maybe you are the sexual abuser. We have to look at these things at uh, both, both uh, sides, okay? Get this book. You know, this is going to help you unpeel the onion. I, I like this because it goes into this. Uh, he goes different, right into energy and DNA and ancestors. You know, he goes right into this. This, this is a really, uh, really good book. Uh, what does he say here? To establish further evidence that not only can you make contact with your ancestors, but you can also work with them across time and space to heal self-defeating and self-destructive patterns that have been passed along through the generations. We turn to some of the more recent discoveries in science. Specifically, we look to startling discoveries in quantum physics and genetics that prove we can make conscious contact with people, both living and dead, across time and space. Most of us have probably heard of Einstein said in the relation to his famous formula to energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. Science has shown 
as its most basic level, everything in our universe is energy. At the subatomic level, there is no matter, just pure energy. So he goes in and, and, and going into the DNA, um, talking about the frequency of the DNA. I think my favorite chapter in this book when uh, he talks about healing as well, intergenerational healing, healing across generations. Get this book when you start doing your shadow work because especially it helped me when I was going through the part uh, in this, uh, this is a, a tight, uh, when I was going through the generational trauma in my book, when I, we, we, when we break down the family tree, when you go through the family tree in my book, this is really going to be helpful. When you get, when you break down the family tree in this book, See that tree on the front? I got this tree in my book. But when you break down the family tree in this book, this book is going to be helpful really navigating that part of the book. Okay? Uh, especially if you got, you know, some heavy stuff. Uh, I like this book too because he talks about additions and 12-step programs. There are free uh, programs available, free resources out there that some of us fall in these categories that we had, uh, you know, maybe we had a mother or father that was addicted to crack, was addicted to alcohol, was addicted to these these things. Some of us are dealing with this type of stuff. Maybe our, our parent was not that. Maybe they were a sex worker. You know, we, we, hey, some of us come from so many different backgrounds. Everybody walk a life and the ancestors' work they have to do is different. And that was certain my disposition. And no one was talking about that. So I want to make sure that I am addressing people that comes from dysfunction. That is the most, you know, sacred. To me, that's the most sacred shadow work. That's the most sacred shadow work. I've seen people come from that 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 type of work and they are fierce, fierce spiritual warriors. So I want to make sure that you have the resources that you need to work through that because you matter. You are valuable. The the uh, the wisdom, the experiences that you have are priceless. And you going back, getting that medicine and being able to share that medicine with other people is going to be valuable in the way you share it. Now, to go back and look at other people's story, look at Iyanla Van Zandt's story. Look at some of these people's stories who were resilient and now they, the platform that they have, they've healed. So, yeah. He's talked about the step 12 step program. I think that's important too to understand too the frequency that you were born on. Um, but like I said, I have some great meditations also to address some of these issues on the platform that can help you work through the also tools. Like I said, these this is work. And said this is work. Uh, it was another part in here that I liked that I'm trying to find when he talked about ancestor secrets. See, he go back to, uh, he says exactly what I said. That's what my book is all about. First heal thyself. And that's what this is about. The core of your work is going to be healing. You know, and I'm going to get more into, you know, that's the core of your work is healing. That's the work where the work is going to come in at. Uh, that, and what he said, some, and I thought, yeah, family secrets, family secrets. I think this is, uh, because that was, that was, you know, we had a storyline that we presented to the world, but then you had these family secrets. I don't know if you ever, if you had that experience. But it says, buried in the recesses of your family history, you may find secrets. Due to cultural societal prohibitions, these facts about family typically remain repressed, repressed as are the strong feelings associated with these secrets. 
there is considerable shame that prevent these secrets from being acknowledged and dealt with, so they become toxic to other family members. Unfortunately, feelings such as rage, lust, guilt, or fear, and actions that are unacceptable, such as incest, addiction, or eating disorders, or express get expressed in some way to in spite of the attempts to hold them at bay. For example, the individual who was molested as a child expresses this as sexual addiction, or the one carrying a great deal of guilt tries to make others feel guilty. Even more likely, these repressed feelings and behaviors get projected onto others in the family who then act out these toxic feelings without being aware of their original source. And see, this is how this is how transference happen too. Generational transference happen. It has happened so subtle that we don't even realize that it's happening when it does happen. Like I said, this is a good book to get. This book is uh, by Stephen D. Farmer. Really good book. Okay, Healing Ancestral Karma. Like I said, uh, uh, when I looked at this, I I realized, you know, I was like, oh my God, this is, uh, shadow work is ancestors work. When you get to looking at that and seeing how everything is passed down, and we definitely talk talk about this in my book as well. Uh, so this is, so if you was to get something to assist you with some of the Shadow work with your ancestors. I recommend this book, Healing Ancestral Karma. If you want to get uh, deep into that, and but I also have some meditations on the channel that are helpful too. It really helped me doing the psycho, uh, uh, psycho spiritual work, which I made meditations to help me walk me through a lot of that healing, and it it, it has been transformational for me. And maybe it'll be transformational for you. And see, this is the kind of work I do when you schedule like um, appointments with me to go through this kind of work with you. I do do psycho spiritual work. We're going to do meditations. I'm going to walk you through meditations uh, designed for you so you can get the healing that you need, you know. It was important for me to do that, to really, to, again, because this is a spiritual thing as well. We're using our spiritual tools and energy to help heal ourselves, and it de it definitely yields good results for me. So this is a good book to get to. Um, what is another good book, which I, I thought was transformational for me because I kept going out to the mounds and I kept going outside to this park near the mounds, the land and the land started talking to me and uh, this book right here confirmed a lot of my connection with the land and with the ancestors on the land, how I was being drawn out there and it reminds me, I have to do my uh, fall equinox rituals, I hope you're doing your rituals for me, I like doing my rituals uh to the land ancestors in seasons as well. Um, I'll do a fall ritual where I'm going down there probably this week because it was an equinox. So I'm going down there to do a fall ritual and sit out there and um, put some things on the river under a tree or something. And I'm going to do some prayers. I just do my whole little ritual thing that I do to honor those ancestors. It's just something sacred that I do. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there, uh, doing this kind of work and, and how to honor it. You know, again, these are your own rituals. This is the way you can honor a spirit. Okay, so um, making making repairs with older lineage. Uh, is this it? I think this is it because I got a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, I got this this folded over, so I'm gonna read this to you guys. But this book was essential going out into nature. I was doing it 
unknowingly. I was doing this unknowingly. I had no idea I was doing, I was just, you know, again, uh, a lot of my books too just confirm some of the things I was already doing, especially this book when I was already doing shadow work, but I was uh, funneling through the family stuff. I was fun. I was studying recycling the family stuff, and this helped me really understand more about the family stuff. Okay, I put all this together in the book, so uh, I hope it made sense. I hope it makes sense for a lot of you, uh, and I hope you know get uh, don't do it alone. It is going to be helpful to you. I don't hope anything. It's going to be helpful as long as you get the support that you need. Support is always good and for your mental and spiritual wellness. We always need that trusted friend, uh, people of sound clarity, they, that they, they, they are healed as well. We need those type of people to be sounding boards for them, and we can be sounding boards, uh, sounding boards for us, and we can be sounding board, boards for them. We need those type of people in our life. Those are the kind of people that we need in our life to sustain our sanity, whether it, it is a therapist uh, it, it or it is a close friend, accountability partner. But we need those type of people in our life to, to keep that, uh, keep balanced, okay? And to keep our conscious connection with our divine guidance. Uh, oh, it is okay. It says making repairs with older lineage ancestors. In this, the next stage, you will move into catalyzing healing and beneficial change for your ancestors and living family. Some may find this intention presumptuous, arrogant, unnecessary, a reversal of natural order, or otherwise inappropriate, because it implies that we living humans can help our ancestors. These concerns are legitimate and worth exploring. Objections typically revolve around one of the three assumptions. Our ancestors are already well and do not need our help. Intervention is only ethically appropriate when help is explicitly requested, and we are not in a position to usefully assist our ancestors even if the help is needed and requested. To some degree, I agree with all of these objections. For one, the ancestors don't exactly need our help. It's those who are ghosts and not yet ancestors or otherwise in a conflicted and unelevated condition who could use the support. We are not exactly helping the ancestors, but rather inviting them to assist the dead in becoming ancestors. In this way, the the repair restores the natural order. Which ancestors are spiritual elders who actively, effectively support their descendants? As for the second objection, the importance of not rushing in to heal or fix without invitation. If you follow the steps in the repair process, you first come into a relationship with the ancestral guides, a guardian of the lineage and then with support and guidance proceed to understand the lineage without changing anything only after coming into a relationship with the true elders of the lineage do you even attempt to act in ways that benefit the dead by this point the work should be driven by the ancestral guides not by your script for what ought to happen if the guys say back off, you can try to understand their reasons, but you should still respect their counsel. Okay, so you're going to get the ancestral guides. And I talk about that. I had that marked in this book somewhere. Where I talk about the ancestral guides. Is this talking about it? I think this is. It says, as you enter, I think this is, goes on to the lineage and ancestors and the collective dead. And, uh, and the way 
you understand ancestors in this book. Oh my gosh, it, it you can stick with uh, along with ancestors just doing ancestors work doing ancestors work and never even make it uh to the traditional spiritual practice. Cuz this work right here it is such a wide scope and it 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 it's a lot of growth you can do with this. There's a lot of work you can do with this. As you enter the relationship with your ancestral guides, you might wonder why the span of time between the lives and your own. Family patterns of disconnection and pain often originate in lifetimes of ancestors between the vibrant guides and the more recent re remembered dead. This chapter focuses on the practices to get to know and when needed make repairs with the ancestors who are beyond the reach of the remembered names and faces. In this work, you will you will learn to identify ancestral gifts and challenges and in living stories about yourself and your family. Work with the lineage ancestors beyond the living memory also sets the stage for stage for effective work with the more recent and remembered dead. So going out, remember, we, we, we're working with the ones who are not remembered, the unknown dead. As you remember, in Chapter 2, we explored differences between the remember and collective dead. We also distinguished among the experiences of the individual, lineage, and collective and group-level ancestors. Now we're going to go deeper into lineage, like strands of filaments. Our bloodline consists of individual ancestors whose lives and spirits weave and combine to form sturdy fibers. The intricate weave of these fibers in turn express beautiful elaborate cloth of ancestors as singular collective consciousness. The quality of the raw materials and individual lives inform the integrity of the fibers and the extensions of the quality of raw garment. Each level, scale, every individual life is inseparable from the whole. I heard people describe their experience of distinct family lineage in many different and beautiful ways. Even for a same person and bloodline tends to have specific association, a feeling of tone, an energetic signature. For example, I tend to experience my parental grandfather as a bright current of electricity, bird-like, murk. Mercur, mercurial, angler, like lightning, while my maternal grandfather line feels heavier, feels like urn, nice sky, pine trees, snow. So there, he's going through just telling you what the frequency feels like. But this, like I said, this is a really good book. Uh. And they, like I said, break down the ancestors that are more beneficial for you to work with when you're working with a ancestral line that is difficult, a bloodline that is difficult. So going out, going back in with those ancestral guys are going to be beneficial. Now, moving on, this book that was first introduced. This is my first introduction, I think, to ancestral work. Period. Uh, reading about someone else's experience with ancestral work and that's what this book is about yes a west african spiritual tradition and i think that she was in ifa if i'm not mistaken and oh my gosh that experience uh she talks about her experience in here uh, let me see if there's a chapter I would like to go over with you. Uh, oh, here's, let's look at the chart. Garden of Spirits, 59. I think this is the one that she talked to. I probably got it already marked. Is it already marked, Lord? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, and she talks about again, again, either 
she can really talk about the Arishas. Here it is. Arisha teachers say that the nearest resolution to any problem resides with the spirits of your bloodline. As my godfather, Cyril, Skip, Butler, Omilakun said, if we think we see father, it is only because we are standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. In Arisha, every Mojuba, a Mahuba, a form of prayer begins by first honoring the ancestors, the holy mothers and fathers. All ritual work directed at the deities proceeds to similar fashion by first invoking and thanking the spirits. Any elder you choose to learn from will start you on the path of Arisha by first making sure your feet are firmly planted in the soil of the ancestors. You hear me? Now, they said it right here. She says it right here in this book. Okay? Working in Ancestral gar Garden will become fundamental to your daily life and will provide foundation upon which you learn to breathe with God. In order to know the deities, you must first know yourself, which involves intimately in paying homage to your roots and origin of the ego. See, I told you, it goes right back to this. It's going to always go back to you. It's always going to go back to your healing. It ain't no way around it. You got to, you got to, you got to master you. You got to master you to get into, uh, get into spirit. I'm telling you now, cultivating a soulful connection with your, with your egoon, your ancestors, that's who the egoon are, requires our full commitment, focused attention, hard work, and consistent care. You heard it here, consistent care. That's why I said this is a way of life. You got your ancestors up, altar up, you know, you think you don't have nothing to do. Yes, you do. You have something to do. As we do the daily, often heart wrenching and back breaking work of turning over, seeding, weeding, and tending the ancestral guarding, garden, the rhythms of our lives start to change. See, when you start doing the work on yourself, that's, that's doing the work. That's what I'm telling you. And I constantly, I'm constantly doing the work now myself, and it is so hard. I'm going through so many changes right now, and it is so hard. It is it's so difficult. You know, it's so difficult. Uh, 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 again, it starts with us. We are our biggest uh, competition. I'm telling you now. When we learn to share our existence with palatable and wise spiritual presence, our relationship with the Egoon becomes a sheltering arm that protects us when we are vulnerable, embraces us when we are lonely, and carries us when we are too weak to walk along. Gradually, we, dr gradually we learn how to give our plot the right balance of light and water and how to protect it from spiritual predators of fear and soulless ritual. We develop the ability to work gently through difficult feelings about those ancestors whose actions, when alive, caused harm to us or our loved ones. We discover spiritual resources for tending to the unmourned losses and unhealed rages within our family histories. Those tangled vines that live alongside the succulent vegetation in our lineages. With work and in time, we find ourselves in an abundant garden overflowing with sweet fruit to sustain us on our journeys and strengthened by vital roots out of which our existence has sprung. It takes years to grow a lush ancestral garden. To discover which fruits grow well beside which vegetables, which rituals and practices will strengthen your bond with the igun it takes continual practice to discern which parts of the plant are, are loamy, sandy, clay, rocky. How best to enrich each. You'll need certain tools, materials, and basic information. 
I give them to you here as my elders gave them to me. And as I, I have learned to work with them in caring for my own garden of the spirits, make them your own and work with them as your heart tells you. Okay, and then she goes into an uh, ancestral shrine. So this is a good book, too. It's telling you, again, goes into the shadow work, goes into, again, like she says, like a, a garden. You, you have to tend to attend to it. But we go into, you know what the garden is? The garden is you. The garden is you. Healing yourself. Getting out, you know, healing that frequency. Okay, so I wanted to come here. I, I felt like I needed to come here and explain that to a lot of us who have experienced trauma that come from a family of trauma and doing that work. You are required to do the work too. And there is support out there for you too, beloved, whenever you're ready to do the work. I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, it was insightful to you. I'll leave the link below uh, down here. Um, to where you can purchase these books. Most of these books came from Amazon. You can get all of these books, in fact, from Amazon. Because that's where all of these books came from. All of them. Even the one that I, I created. But hey, I will leave a link down here uh, so you can purchase these books. Uh, it definitely, they were helpful in me processing, doing my ancestor work. Most of them really was confirmational because I was already doing some of them. Uh, but for you, those that who, who don't know, you don't know and you want confirmations and you want to do, you know, you want this on your own, I will leave the link down here uh, to the books in my website. Okay. Uh, but thank you for being here with me today and I hope this video was insightful for you. Light, love, namaste. I say love one.